Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory double din on this 2008 Chevy Trailblazer. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over the bench to show you how to assemble the dash kit, wiring harness, and new radio, and we'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get this radio on out. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and check to make sure you don't have any discs within the unit itself. Now it doesn't look like there are any discs. Nothing's coming out here. Now this dash bezel, as you notice up and around the radio, it continues all the way up and around the gauge cluster. So the whole thing needs to come out. Now it looks like there is one Phillips screw here in the lower park pocket corner. Pull that on out. Now you can use your fingers. We also have a panel tool here. Okay, from this point, this side's done. Now we're gonna get the camera out a little bit. There are gonna be two screws up in the gauge cluster that you also have to remove, also being Phillips. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the two seven millimeter bolts on this side. Okay, that gets us down just enough to get to the final three Phillips screws that are up underneath this bezel. All right, so with this screw, the two seven millimeters out to allow us to pull out the three screws at the bottom of the dash and two screws at the top. We are finally ready now on all parts of the dash bezel to go ahead and remove it. Now it's loose at this point. Go ahead and drop our uh, steering column. Go ahead and disconnect your harnesses. There's one on this side, or it looks like two. four-wheel drive harness oh and then finally we have the two power harnesses here now we should be able to lift this on out carefully there we go Whew. now going back to our seven millimeter let's go ahead and remove the three screws up and around the radio Okay, so with those three screws removed, finally, after all that work, we can pull out our radio. Now, your radio is gonna have a couple of harnesses. Go ahead and disconnect. First one's your antenna. Then you're gonna have your main harness and accessory harness here, depending on your options. There we are, all done. And now we're totally done with the radio. At this point of time, we actually can set them off to the side. At this time, let's head over to the bench to show you the new parts that we're gonna be using for our install. Okay, so here we are at the bench. Now the parts that we're gonna do for the install is your chosen radio, since we're doing a double din. Um, the double din that the customer has chosen. Joybring branded radio, where essentially it features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It was picked up for around 140 bucks. And now to accommodate this new radio in the factory location, we do need a dash kit. This vehicle calls for the Metro 95-2001. If you're doing a uh, single din dash kit, it's the Metro 99-2001, but we're using the double din version. We'll need an antenna adapter. We're using the Metro 40-GM10. And finally, this vehicle does call for a smart harness and probably their most budget friendly one if you don't have steering wheel controls is this... Uh, Axis GM Class 2 is the LC-GMRC-01. Retains your chime and a couple of the basic um, features like accessory, illumination, things like that at the radio. Now, if you do have steering wheel volume controls, we'll link the version, that version down in the description. Or if you have Bose and, and are retaining that, or OnStar, a lot of different features and options. Again, we're gonna link all those variations of harnesses in the description for you. The first thing is we're gonna grab our harness adapter and we're gonna grab our harnesses that came with the radio. Today, we're gonna be soldering 
and using heat shrink. But if you don't know how to solder, you can certainly use butt connectors or even more preferable crimp caps. And that allows you to make your connections nice and clean. Once we're done, we're done with that, we're going to get our dash kit up and around the radio. All right, what we've done here is we grabbed both harnesses, we stripped both ends, and at this point in time, we're going to match color for color. Now, before we start soldering everything up, we've loaded one side up with some heat shrink. So after those connections cool, move them up over those connections and shrink them down with a heat gun. Now, again, like I said before, if you don't know how to solder or don't have the means to do so, crimp caps or butt connectors, go ahead and crimp it. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as it's just not appropriate for this automotive application. All right, so we've started getting everything soldered up here. We got this guy all soldered. Essentially, it's all color for color in our case here today. Now, a um, couple of things that we had to be aware of. There are three sets of orange wires in this guy, and uh, we gotta find which one is the right illumination wire. Now, the best way to go is plug this in and see if any of these orange wires in this harness actually match up with corresponding wires within the car. Meaning when you plug it in, is there a wire that actually passes through to the other side? If not, you don't need any of these orange wires and instead there's going to be one that's generated by the smart harness according to our instructions. We, when we went and looked, this orange wire and the orange with a white stripe, there's nothing on the other end where they plug in. So they're not used because they're not actually connected to anything. So what we'll need to do is use the one with the eye face illumination or interface illumination in this vehicle, it, it's apparent that the illumination wire is generated by the smart harness and not it's not analog as in the older version of this vehicle. So that's something to be aware of. Everything else is color for color here. We hooked up, nice thing is our smart harness provides a parking brake wire as well as reverse gear trigger wire, which we've hooked up there as well. And we left an extra accessory off because it provides 10 amps, which is really nice. So down the road, if we added, you know, another accessory, we have a nice insulated um, accessory wire where we can add more accessories if needed. So at this point in time, kind of like what we've done here, we're going to move our heat shrink up and over those connections. We'll do the same up here and shrink it down with the heat gun. All right, so we finished soldering up those connections here. Those are all done. Now we'd like to actually wrap our harness with some test tape. It gives the wire a lot more protection within the dash itself and also gives it a nice, clean, professional look. All right, so we went ahead and finished our harness here. Everything's all taped up really nice and clean. Accessory harness, main power harness and speaker harness. Our chime module. This is all done, nice and clean and all good to go. So we'll set that guy off to the side. Now we have um, unpackaged our dash kit. Our dash kit's really easy to use. Essentially here you just find the side that the uh, little teeth fit into here, just like that. Put uh, the one on the other side. Now you have little spacers here in case the radio needs to come out in the dash a little bit. These just fit back behind uh, faceplate mounts. We're gonna use the hardware supplied by the radio, get it all bolted up, and uh, we're just about done here at the bench. All right, so we went ahead and got that all mounted up here. Actually looks really nice and it fits really well uh, within the dash kit, so super pleased with that. With the dash kit and wiring harness done, we're really done here at the bench. At this point of time, let's head back to the car to get our dash kit and our wiring harness installed. All right, so we're back here in the truck and we're ready now at this point of time to start reinstalling our radio. Okay, so let's go ahead and install our harness here. Okay, it's making some noise, that's good. Let's go ahead and grab our radio and start making those connections. Now we went ahead and already connected our antenna adapter. Plug right on in here, tuck everything back in. Now we're going to put our little uh, little extensions on. Okay, now before we get too far, let's make sure everything is working. Generally with these access harnesses, it takes a minute to program. So be patient on the first boot up. Um, it'll eventually, there it goes, it eventually turns on. Now every boot up after that will boot up much quicker than that. Seems to be working great. Everything's working as intended here. At this point, we are good to go to reassemble the dash.
Okay, now we just gotta put screws in. I wanna test to make sure everything else is working. All right, let's finish reassembling the dash. All right, so that's about it. We got the radio in, everything's looking awesome. Thanks again for watching. If you wanna use any of the parts that we use today in our video, we'll link everything down in the description of the video to make it nice and convenient for you to purchase. Now, if you wanna see how we did a backup camera on this Trailblazer, we'll actually link that video down in the description as well, which walks you through step-by-step -step on how to integrate one to this aftermarket radio. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. But we'll see you in the next video.